Well, what a sight it is. Hello, everyone, and welcome along as we're back here in GB3. Of course, this time, though, on a bit of a European road trip, we head abroad for the only time this season to the legendary Circuit de Spa Francochamps. Such a challenging, twisty, breathtaking racetrack, which sees us start the second half of the season, round number 13 uh, of the GB3 Championship, partnered by the BRDC. Now, we don't have uh, a John Jackson or a Piers Pryor uh, this round. You'll just have to put up with my voice and I'm of course Lewis McGlade. Qualifying's already been completed, it's already been dominated by Luke Brown and we'll get onto that uh, in a few moments time but I did say there that we've started the second half of the season, the first half finished with that fantastic round uh, at Snetterton. Let's take a look back a few weeks to when we went racing once again. Well, we will uh, pause on the uh, highlight front and uh, we'll come back to that uh, at another time. Obviously, we can confirm it was a, uh, a fantastic round uh, of racing. Super, super tight. Uh, we'll see if we can catch them now. Highlights from the 10th race of the GB3 Championship. It was Callum Foyzen on pole position. Joel Granfors would instantly try and cover off his championship rival in Luke Browning on that run down toward Riches and turn one. But Browning's superior launch would put him up into second position as everyone would go side by side through the first corner. A little bit of side by side action between Brandon Oxley and Max Esterson as Luke Browning would be charging away from these two. Joel Granfors having to worry about the attack of Matthew Reese. Roberto Farrier also charging his way up to the rear of this by setting the fastest lap of the race. Roberto so Farrier's teammate in Callum Voisin was leading the way, looking very strong, starting from pole position and leading at the moment. Yo Granfors was charging up to the rear end of Luke Browning, who was making a couple of little mistakes trying to find his way past the race leader, just pushing the car to its very limit around the Snetterton circuit. A couple of issues in the background as Matthew Reese would fall into mechanical problems at the final corner. He'd return to the pit lane and would retire from the race. Callum Voisin, though, was leading comfortably. He'd come down towards the final corner. He'd punch it out and take yet another win in the GB3 Championship for Carlin. He'd be chased across the line, though, by the feisty championship rivals of Luke Browning and Joel Granfors. Race two of the weekend would be underway and Luke Brown would have a poor launch from pole position as he'd drop back into the clutches of not only Joel Granfors but also of Matthew Reese. He'd look to the inside but Luke Browning would fend both of them off with a mighty charge into Riches. It was Javier Segrera though who was on the attack in the background as they go a cheeky bit of three wide down into the hairpin. Alex Connor battling it out with Tom Leppin running through Palmer on that run down towards Agostini. It was Roberto Farrier who was on the charge. Brandon Oxley and Max Esterson would battle it out at the back end of the top ten and John Bennett in the number 27 elite motorsport car would try and get himself involved. It was Max Esserson with the up and under trying to get back past uh, into Bombhole. Wasn't able to do so. Bit of a moment from Javier Segrera onto the Bentley straight as he was trying to keep up with these two that were running away with things. Luke Browning under an awful lot of pressure from his championship rival of Joel Granfors, but he was not cracking under the pressure. Someone who did though, big moment for Callum Voisin going a little bit too wide at the first corner of Riches and out into the barrier and out of the race. Nick Jilks, super move down the inside of Bryce Aaron and coming through Brundle and into Nelson. Got the move done by the time they got into bomb hole. But it was Luke Browning leading. Couple of little moments, though. He was under a lot of pressure. Had one. And that was the attempt, the opportunity for Yoel Granfors to try and find his way through. There was near contact between the two. But the opportunity just wasn't there. Luke Browning would come out of the final corner and punch his way towards the line, taking another win in the GB3 Championship. And then it was time for the reverse grid race with Mikael Grunfig on the pole position. He'd set himself off and down towards Richards for the first time. A poor start from Key and Shield and an issues for Brandon Oxley running down into the hairpin. He'd go for a spin and would retire from the race on the spot. Mikael Grunfig, though, uh, was able to clear his way off of the race lead. A bit of a moment from Matthew Rees coming out uh, onto the Bentley straight, just up onto that curb, beaching the car just a little bit and being thrown up into the air. Key and Shields would retire from the race after a mechanical issue uh, on that race start. A big 
shame for the Scotsman looking for a good result this afternoon. Unfortunately, it would not happen. Bit of a lock-up coming down into Brundle and Nelson, of course, from Yol Granforce as he's trying to chase down his championship rival in Luke Browning. Whilst it was a Fortec 1-2, he was trying to charge his way up the order. Bit of a moment. John Bennett, oh, very close to clouting the rear end of Roberto Farrow and open the door for Matthew Reese to climb his way through, moving up the order. And then John Bennett into the same corner would be passed by Luke Browning. And a bit of side-by-side -side between himself and Joel Granfors, who just about give enough room on the exit of the hairpin. And John Bennett was able to hang on. Our race leaders were charging, though. The top three separating themselves from the rest of the pack. Marcus Flack and James Headley trying to find their way past the race leader of Mikael Grundtvig. But then they'd keep their eyes on themselves. James Headley trying to get past Marcus Flack with an inside move. Wasn't able to make that one stick. And Marcus Flack was able to hang on for second position. Neither of them were able to get past this man as Mikael Grundtvig would take another win in the GB3 Championship. Super round it was. Luke Browning leading the championship by 11 points. The two of those were separated by very little across the entire round. Roberto Faria, uh, who won the third race uh, around here last year, looking very good in third in the championship. And Max Esterson, who we'll be talking about him a little bit later on because he's looking very, very fast around here. Starts in the second row in both race one and race two a little bit later on this evening. Moving down the order, James Headley, you'll see there, JHR Developments next to his name. He's moved over to JHR to be teammates with Matthew Rees. Uh, we'll sit in 11th in the championship. Uh, Brandon Oxley, great qualifying round here, looking very, very fast at Spa. Same with all of three of the high techs uh, as well, looking extremely uh, strong, of course. Uh, further down from that, you've got the likes of Nico Christodoulou and David Morales who are working their way up in the championship. But I've talked a lot about Spa. Let's take a look around the circuit. It's time to go international then as we head to the legendary Spa Francorchamps in Belgium. This circuit has served the world of motorsport for over a hundred years, built back in 1920. It's changed a lot in that time, but still keeps that character that we as fans and the drivers absolutely love. Seven kilometers. Well, we will come back to the circuit a little bit later on because they are already beginning the formation lap around uh, this legendary circuit. We can see them uh, rolling off. They've done uh, their outlap from the pit lane. They've lined up on the grid and they are getting themselves ready for nine laps of racing around here, which shouldn't be too bad when it comes to tyres or anything in that set, but it should be a little bit tricky, especially as the uh, evening rolls on when it comes to the slipstream. Now, you've got that run from the source all the way up to Lecomte, which is going to cause its fair share of problems. It's Championship top two, though, starting from the front row of the grid. Luke Browning ahead of Yoel Granfors. Going to be a tricky test for Yoel Granfors to try and find his way through. And Luke Browning's been so strong all weekend. But Max Esterson, who was the fastest in the first speed trap up here at uh, up towards Lake Com, starts from third alongside Kean Shields with an absolutely super qualifying. Bryce Aaron, his teammate, just behind in fifth place. Absolutely crazy stuff from High Tech. Mackenzie Cresswell will start from sixth uh, in the Chris Dippman racing car. Brandon Oxley just behind uh, his teammate in seventh with Javier. Segrera uh, in eighth for Carlin, who seemed to be struggling a little bit more uh, around the circuit to Spa Francorchamps. We'll start only from eighth position. Uh, behind them in ninth will be Matthew Rees, of course, does have a teammate uh, this time. We'll be starting a couple of positions behind, but still struggling with ninth position just ahead of Tom Levin for Elite Motorsports. We'll copy and paste the teams onto the next row of the grid because it's James Headley for JHR Developments alongside John Bennett, uh, who starts from 12th position, saying that he was they were aiming for a, a lap later on in the session before a red flag came out. Nico Christodoulou and Alex Connor make it an all Arden row seven uh, as they'll work their way up the order. Marcus Flack and Nick Jilks for Hill Speed. Nick was uh, setting some personal bests back in Stetterton, uh, struggling a little bit more with qualifying around here, but hasn't had the track time that some others have had. David Morales in 17th position with Callum Boysen, pole sitter and race winner in the opening two races of the previous couple of rounds, uh, starting a lot further down at the order than he would have expected with Mikael Grunfig, the reverse grid master, Roberto Farrier, who caused that red flag, Tommy Smith, and Zach Taylor rounding out the grid. We do have a few drivers that are on uh, at least some new tyres uh, in the form of Max Esserson, James Headley and Matthew Reese who have taken half a set of tyres, so two uh, uh, tyres. They get 
uh, uh, eight compounds, uh, eight tyres, uh, when they go racing for each weekend, eight of the dry uh, sets, they can use them however they wish. The, a lot of teams do tend to use uh, four at the start of quality to scrub them, to, to essentially remove the, the tyre markings, to remove like the, the, the sealant from the tyres, and then they'll actually do a proper quality run so that they're ready to go racing whenever they want. So sometimes we don't really know uh, which way round it's going to go. But we do know that at least to some degree there is a completely uh, fresh two tyres on Max Essen, who's going to be very, very fast. Said before, again, fastest in that first speed track, which is the one that's towards the end of the Kemmel Strait. Now that says to me that that car is going to be very, very fast. The Douglas Motorsports cars are normally pretty fast, uh, but Luke Browning, he is going to be a hard driver to beat. Had pole position by nearly half a second. Now, yes, a red flag did come out late uh, in the session, which would have caused a lot of issues for some of the drivers and some of their, their qualifying stints. But still, that is, uh, is an impressive margin to hold over such a competitive field. We've said it before. We'll say it again. These are the future superstars. Drivers will be seeing uh, up and down the order of motorsport for years to come. And to have a, <laughs> a lap time like that around a circuit like this is is absolutely incredible. They'll line themselves up on the grid. There's David Morales, who's uh, just ahead of Callum Voisin, as we'll see the 22 cars into position and getting ready to go racing. The second half of the season, round number 13 of the GB3 Championship, partnered by the BRDC. We're about to see something very special here, going racing around such an incredible venue. Circuit de Spa-Francorchamps, our European road trip. Two races here today on Saturday. Not much time to sit back, relax, and learn from the mistakes of what could be made here. The green flags in the air in the background. We're getting ready for that run down towards the source. 260 metres, Luke Browning has of muster as he gets away and gets racing. It's a good launch from him. Same from Yoel Grand Fours. You've got a great launch as well from Kean Shields, who's trying to get around the outside of Max Ederson. All trying to find their way through a bit of three wide. Mackenzie Cresswell makes a little bit of contact with Bryce Aaron. One of the cars out a little bit wide from the JH Hard Development cars. Oh, there's three wide. There's going to be a little bit of contact as they run their way down the hill. That's Callum Voison off the road as one of the JH Hard Development cars. I think that's Edley who's had a bit of a contact down the hill. John Bennett as well. I do believe as we're a bit of side by side up towards Eau Rouge. Absolutely super. Superb stuff from Roberto Barrier to make it stick on one of the Ardens as they're going side by side. Super launch from Zach Taylor, who's just coming through here. We head up the order, though. It's Joel Granfors leading, who's managed to steal it from Luke Browning on that run down to Lake Com. We might see two high techs on the podium, though. Look at this from Kean Shields, trying to get around the outside of Max Esterson. He's not able to do so. And the Chris Dittman racing car of Brandon Oxley has been super fast all weekend. He's trying to find his way through. The safety car is out, though. The safety car has come out onto the circuit after issues down towards the first corner and that I don't think is much of a surprise to anyone not sure uh, as, as to what exactly happened there uh, down towards Eau Rouge. There was a bit of three wide. There's a bit of squeezing coming off of La Source. We normally expect to see a bit of drama, but my goodness me, I didn't expect to see a car out that far that early. There is the safety car waiting to pick up the field. But it's a long lap around here, so we're certainly going to lose at least one, but the marshals will work very quickly to uh, to get rid of them. Important move, though, for Yol Granfors to take over the race lead straight away. It was kind of expected. The slipstream up to Towards Lake Comp is is incredible. Sector one and sector three around here. We know it time and time again. Every time we go resin, it's one of those things that we get. Uh, we, we talk about that they are wide open for the slipstream. That's where you, you're expected to see most of the moves. It doesn't mean that you can't make moves stick uh, through the second sector, but it just changes how the teams uh, optimize their setup. Whether they're going for a high downforce package or you know a high downforce uh, wings, and comparatively, that's like tiny little bits of a degree difference but it, you know, it makes the difference uh, and it's whether you're going to make moves in the second sector or whether you're going to be aiming to make them in the first and third of course you just press the right uh, you know the right pedal down uh, as hard as you can with the right foot to try and uh, make the moves if you're doing it in sector one and three whereas if you're doing it in sector two you're going to be a little bit braver uh, we'll see them all pick up the safety car and then we'll confirm the order to you. We do know uh, for certainty that Yoel Granfors has taken over the race lead. Great start as well, by the way, by Brandon Oxley, uh, who's got himself up into fifth position. So super stuff, uh, as well as with Key and Shields. Uh, I'm not sure, though, which one it was. It might have been, might have been my... Uh, Bryce Allen's dropped back to eighth position. Uh, and we can see Matthew Reese is in 11th with the JHR Developments team. I was kind of wondering which of those cars, of course, we know high-tech and JHR Developments do look 
fairly similar. It was indeed issues for James Headley uh, around the first corner. I will correct myself. I believe the black car uh, would have actually been uh, Krista Dulu, uh, who's had an issue there on the right-hand side, not John Bennett, who's actually moved up inside the top 10. You can see here they're coming through uh, the endurance uh, paddock. They all have had that uh, kind of come through from race control. Of course, they've got no team radio, so they're kind of following the leader in this sense. They'll drag them down the, uh, the endurance pits to kind of avoid the crash. The marshals can do their work uninterrupted, uh, having to get rid of a couple of cars there. Uh, Chris to do lose the one on the right, and I believe uh, it is James Headley who's the one that's being taken off from the top of shot. Uh, Alex Connor had uh, a pretty poor start, dropped back courtesy of all of that as well. Um, but yes, either way, a dramatic way to start the race. We'll take a look on the replay and see if we can piece this one uh, apart again. It was a great start from Luke Browning on that run down into turn one. He had it covered off nicely from Yol Granfels, but there's a little bit of three wide just in the back of the pack. You can see Tom Levin there diving. It was a bit of a dive from Mackenzie Cresswell to make a touch of contact uh, with Bryce Aaron. We lose them behind the building critically, and by the time we can see them back in shot, you can already see at the top of the uh, the screen, uh, had Callum Voisin being sent off in that blue and orange car. We had uh, Nico Christodoulou in that black car already pulling over and uh, already backwards uh, was the uh, was the ailing James Headley, who unfortunately said making his debut for the uh, JHR developments team. Well, that's not how he would have wanted things to uh, to begin. Uh, moving away from the elite motorsports uh, camp, which is a, a, a bit of a shame, but you know it, it is what it is. These are drivers; they're they're searching for uh, whatever opportunity they can. We know that the JHR developments uh, team are incredibly fast. Matthew Reese has, has proved that time and time again. Um, we were kind of wondering whether they would get a second driver. We were kind of expecting maybe if, uh, if he was, it was going to come from outside uh, of GB3. We weren't expecting to, uh, to see a, a, a driver jump over to that camp uh, from inside the series. But as I say, all these teams have their fair share of things happening behind closed doors. Javier Segrera there, got to say, uh, super drive uh, so far in sixth position, making it up a couple of positions from the start of the race. Whilst Carlin do look like they're struggling a little bit more than usual. Um, around here. I said it before that Callum Voisin, of the last two weekends that we've had at Donington Park and at Snetterton, Callum Voisin's won the opening race in both of them. Uh, and to see the, the, the struggles uh, now, it's as if something's just not quite clicked uh, with how things have, have quite gone on. We'll take a look again at, uh, at another replay to see uh, exactly what's gone on on that race start. Uh, and once again, see if we can kind of piece out. So we've got the, um, the, the move there from Mackenzie Cresswell, makes that contact with the high-tech car, obviously the blue and uh, yellow. But is there a little bit of three wide down the hill? There's a big bit of contact there. Cannot see who it was, but clearly someone. It, it was three wide, and I kind of wonder wonder if they didn't know they were three wide. Unfortunately, we lose them behind the building. But you can kind of see it there just at the background of the shot. You've got Nico Christodoulou. There was contact as uh, the, I think it was Alex Connor who'd uh, come across into the side of them. My goodness, that is, uh, that is a tricky one to piece together. And race control are going to have to go through it time and time again. There is Alex Connor in the pit lane. Uh, and obviously, a little bit of damage does make sense. Obviously, he was a part of the uh, the incident as well, where his teammate Nico Christodoulou uh, has been forced to retire from the race, and the mechanics are already at work. There's not too much downtime between this race and the next race. Whilst normally when we go racing, it's one race on Saturday, two races on Sunday, that is not the case uh, case here today. We've already done qualifying on Friday, so obviously you see in the first race here, the second race uh, is only five hours after, and that is not really that long. If you've had significant um, damage to the car, uh, think back to Luke Browning in the first race at Donington Park, or even uh, Callum Voice in that second race, of course, uh, snetted him with that uh, crash after the first corner. When you get a car damaged, it's not as if it's uh, on a sim where they just press the reset button and we're good to go. You've got to really put the work in and the mechanics, well, that's where they earn their paycheck. You can see that the safety car is pulling away from the field, so Yoel Granfors will take over the uh, take over the control. I believe it will become a timed race. 12 minutes and 50 seconds uh, left to go, and we'll see how this is going to funnel its way. Is anyone going to make a dive down into the first corner at La Source? Or are they going to wait for that charge towards Le Con? We're back racing here at Circuit de Spa, Franco Champ, as we race our way down towards Turn 1. Key and Shields, a bit of a wide exit coming through the final chicane there. Luke Browning's already having a look. Look at that from uh, Mackenzie Cresswell. He's already having to defend a little bit there. Oh my goodness me, what a super send from Bryce Aaron. Locks it up on the brakes, pulls it down towards the first corner of the apex. There's contact, and Bri oh, Mackenzie Cresswell losses front wing. He's been sent off a little bit. Will he know that there's no front wing on that car? 
because also Tom Levin is trying to find his way through in that elite motorsports car. The pink one that you can see there on the right hand side of shot, already a position lost from Mackenzie Cresswell. Be careful up here. Uh, Matthew Reese will find his way past. That is going to be a very, very scary moment indeed. You can see Alex Connor in the foreground of shot going a lap down, but our race leader is going side by side once again as Luke Browning's being squeezed over to one side of the circuit. Oh my goodness. Yo, Granfors is trying to just hammer his way and hold on to the race lead, but he can't do anything about the superior speed of Luke Browning. He's made it stick side by side in the background as well. That light blue car of Max Esserson trying to get past Javier Segrera as they head their way down towards Ravage. Is there going to be a dive here? No, there is not. Yo, Granfors wasn't really fancy. You can see Nick Jilks in the background making his way past uh, Mackenzie Cresswell. Also with Tommy Smith coming through, Zach Taylor and Mikhail Grunfig. Unfortunately, Mackenzie Cresswell is destined to return to the pit lane as the timer is ticking down. 11 minutes and 20 seconds left to go. Certainly not getting our full nine laps in. Uh, by my estimation, we've got another four or five laps left to go as they head through Puon for the very first time of actual racing. Yo, Grand Fours, though, losing that race lead now. And to worry about the teammate. Look at that. High Tech are looking super this round. Bryce Aaron in that silver High Tech car trying to get his way past Max Esterson, who's been super fast in the speed traps all weekend. And he is coming under so much pressure, not only, though, from Bryce Aaron, but by the uh, two elite motorsports cars of Tom Lebon and John Bennett, who was feeling very confident uh, yesterday, said that he struggled because of the red flag that came out. Uh, and unfortunately, he had to drop down in the session just because uh, he couldn't get the tyres into the working window just based on when they were trying to make their fast laps. And uh, now he can make it stick in the race. Thankfully, it is one of those racetracks that you can race. Bryce Aaron is proving that every single time we cut back to him. Still all over the rear end of Max Esterson. You couldn't get closer to that car if he tried. And Bryce Aaron in that number four is going to send it around the outside down into the final chicane as everyone's kind of scrambling for grip just a little bit. You've got Brandon Oxley uh, as well. He's managed to wake his way onto the podium ahead of Key and Shields as they come across the line. This one for third position at the moment. Brandon Oxley on the left-hand side of your shot in the red and yellow Chris Dittman racing car, hanging on from the flying Scotsman of Key and Shields who have to worry about that blue and day-glow yellow uh, carling car of Javier Segrera who's all over the rear end. Now prepare yourselves. It's two kilometres up towards the source. There is the send once again. Uh, a lap ago from Bryce Aaron. Absolutely superb. Massive control on the brakes. Little bit of a squeeze out. Don't know how race control will feel about that one, but that is what sent Mackenzie Cresswell uh, down into the pit lane. The lead car in your shot there is Alex Connor. Again, going a lap down. Your real race leader is Luke Browning. And then the entire gaggle behind. Look at this. So back onto the podium goes Key and Shields. Brandon Oxy's trying to get around the outside at Lake Com. Oh, that would be a big send. He's fully there. He's gone a little bit off. And that will be the podium position returned to Key and Shields as Javier Segrera in the blue and yellow. Carlin is trying to find his way through as they race down towards Ravage. Also covered off was Max Esterson keeping Tom Leban uh, at Bay. Uh, John Bennett, I think, has dropped back an extra position in this race because he's just uh, now a couple of positions behind his teammate rather than directly uh, there, sat over the rear wing. Uh, this is outside of the uh, outside of the top 10. We've got one of the uh, Max, uh, not Max Esterson's teammates in the form of Tommy Smith uh, and Marcus Flack. That one being Marcus Flack, who's uh, just getting past Matthew Reese, who clearly the JHR Developments car, uh, not really feeling it around here. Max Esterson is under a lot of pressure here. Tom Levin to the outside of Fania, not able to make that one stick. It's a brave send if you can do it. If you can get all the way around the outside there, you've got the inside for the next corner, and that is absolutely critical if you want to make a move. But then you come through this corner, and this one, in my opinion, one of the most important corners on the circuit. Coming through campus, if you lose grip here, you are a sitting duck all the way down towards the bus stop chicane, uh, going through Blanchemont, etc. You are just going to be sat there waiting, knowing the car behind is going to try and make a move at some point. But we're returning to a little bit of single file here as everyone's just catching their breath, just waiting for the final charge. Luke Browning uh, is charging away from everyone. At the end of the previous lap, it was 1.2 seconds. That, by my eye, is closer to two to two and a half seconds as they lap their way past Alex Connor in that red and white Arden car. When is the opportunity going to come from Brandon Oxley to try and get past Key and Shields? The high-tech cars have looked super fast, but uh, that Chris Dittman racing car, I mean, his teammate Mackenzie Cresswell was looking very, very strong indeed. And uh, for Brandon Oxley, who's been superb in qualifying, I think he'll be very hungry to try and get himself uh, onto the podium. He's a little bit further down the championship than he'd want. Uh, and Brandon Oxley uh, only has one podium, and that was back uh, in Donington Park. And in a race three, a race one podium is, uh, 
is a lot more tasty indeed. Down through Eau Rouge once again, back up and over the top at Radion. Tom Levin is right over the rear end of Max Esterson once again, but with the slipstream being picked up, I'd assume that Max Esterson might actually be pretty safe. They're all going for that little slipstream from Alex Connor, who I do not feel good for in this scenario. He's going to have to let the entire contingent through as there's Javier Segrera defending from Max Esterson. Javier Segrera is going to try and hang on for fifth position at the moment. Max Esterson's there, but he's got to worry about Tom Levin. They'll head through Malmody and then back down the hill. Seven minutes left to go in this race. About three laps of three opportunities into some of these corners. They'll be ticking off before they reach that checkered flag. Tom Levin not able to get past Max Esterson uh, at the moment. And sixth place is still going uh, the way of the Douglas Motorsports man who really has found his form in the GB3 Championship as of late. But he is having to worry about an awful lot of things uh, in this race. Javier Segrera has pulled out a little bit of a gap. Tom Levin is still all over the rear end in that elite motorsports car and he's just not able to find a way through. He's got Bryce Aaron to worry about who obviously dropped back a little bit uh, on the race start with that contact down into the first corner of the source uh, and so he'll be very hungry to charge back up in a high-tech team that looked completely revitalized with all three of their cars uh, this weekend. Go through campus up towards Stavolo once again completely pinned from this point and you're just watching that car ahead. You're seeing if you're closing, you're watching your mirrors, thinking, is there the car behind? Are they closing? Are they uh, going to be looking for a dive bomb by the time we head down uh, towards that bus stop chicane? I'm not sure at the moment if we're going to have any uh, big sense. It could be a costly mistake. You've got a lot of time to think, potentially too much time uh, to think about what you're going to do, where you're picking up the breakers. And there is very close in the background. That is Tom Levin with Bryce uh, with uh, yeah, Bryce Aaron uh, directly behind. And Tom Levin felt the need to sort of cover the inside ever so slightly. And he wasn't able to uh, to get through. Bryce Aaron, though, right over the rear end. Tom Levin's been wide, though, at the, uh, at the final chicane. And now Bryce Aaron's closing in once again. Javier Segrera has Max Esterson to worry about. And we we might well be looking at a uh, at a one two for high tech because key and shield has just closed in half a second on yol grand fours this would be a real turn up for the books if key and shields can assist his teammate even doubly so uh, of course luke browning leading the championship at the moment by 11 points well, he'd be leading by an awful lot more if he finishes in this position uh, ahead of the old Grand Force. And if Key and Shields can get one over, well, I think uh, I think the beers will be on Luke Browning uh, at the end of the evening because that would be a super effort for Key and Shields. You can see how much he's closing in. We look backwards, though, towards that battle for fifth position as Max Esterson in that light blue car on the right-hand side of the shot, the number 42, makes his way all the way around the outside. Javier Segrera, that was just the superior straight-line speed courtesy of the slipstream. And he has made his way up. But Javier Segrera straight away looks to the inside at Malmody. Now, that might cost him a little bit of time and might mean that uh, Segrera's got to look back towards Tom Leban. Thankfully, Leban wasn't quite close enough. Uh, also, there was a switch of positions because Marcus Flack in 10th uh, got up to 9th position just ahead of John Bennett. So uh, dropping back uh, an extra little spot. Uh, the more they battle, the more they're dragging uh, the, the, the train of Callum Voisin uh, into the rear of this. Matthew Reese, also Roberto Faria Morales, uh, Jilt, all kind of closing their way into this train also. So... What is the, the classic case of racing around Spa, where the second sector, you've got to worry about dirty air a little bit. That first and third, though, it is just slipstream city, and it keeps the train so nicely together, and it's why it's so amazing that Luke Browning's been able to clear off from the field. The last lap, by the way, he was over, over a second faster than Joel Granfors. That is absolutely crazy. He is so confident around here. And I know we've been speaking about the triple and the GB4 championship. I mean, with that kind of pace, I don't even know if that's impossible for him to have a triple around here. We'll have two laps left to go, though. And he is looking super confident. But everyone else behind, they are under a lot of pressure. This is Tom Levin on the rear end of Javier Segrera, uh, who after making, or having been passed, rather, by Max Esterson, has just dropped off. And he's now going to cover that defensive line coming down into the bus stop chicane. Tom Levin looks to the outside. He's not able to find his way past second apex ticked off and Javier Segrera gets the drive off extending the track limits just a little bit but not quite as much as Marcus Flack did in the background as the uh, the Douglas Motorsports car is now going to have to feel that pressure from another one of the elite motorsports cars in John Bennett who's going to try and get to the outside into La Source that number 27 the black and yellow trying to find his way past the Douglas Motorsports car not yet Callum Boyson directly behind two-time race winner in 2022 ready to challenge as that
that trio will work their way down towards Eau Rouge. Uh, once again, the penultimate lap of this race, the penultimate challenge on this two-kilometer stretch down towards Lake Com. Callum Voison is charging uh, right now. He will definitely not settle for 11th. He wants himself a top 10. He'll want to find his way up for Carlin uh, and for his teammates as well, who are a little bit further ahead in the form of Javier Segrera, but maybe not too far ahead because Tom Leban's coming through here. Oh, a bit of a lock-up there from Tom Leban. Does he pull it up to the apex? No, he doesn't. See ya. Send it straight over the sausage curb. He's going to hang on to the position, but I think the race control might be like, yep, you're going to relinquish that one, mate, because uh, Javier Segrera, would you have made that corner without, <laughs> without that? I don't know. Tom Leban, though, uh, not uh, not able to uh, to make that one stick, at least when it comes to making the racing line. John Bennett in the background, his teammate, uh, was fighting quite hard with Callum Voison. I'm yet to see if Callum Voison was able to make his way through. I believe he did. Let's take a look once again. It's just an unforced error, really. Just locks up that uh, front right as he's trying to turn his way over. He's uh, removing a lot of the weight from the right-hand side of the car as he's turning in. He's braking, and it's a hard braking zone there. You're going uphill uh, into it. Gravity helps you slow down just a touch, uh, but uh, unfortunately on that occasion, his tyres certainly won't. Uh, got a little bit of side-by-side -side there in the background. I don't know if anyone caught that, but that was John Bennett uh, under pressure from, I believe, Roberto Farrier, uh, who's got past Matthew Rees. They'll come round onto this back stretch for the, uh, for the penultimate time. Is your race leader. He is miles away. Last lap, I was shocked when it was one second faster than everyone else. The last lap, he was 1.6 seconds faster than Joel Granfors. It was a 2.16.3 plays a 217.9 this is a confidence uh, based circuit but i mean that's just a completely different level <laughs> and that is why we're definitely going to see luke browning's name for a very very long time final lap about to begin then and yoel granfors five seconds off of his uh, of his championship rival of the race leader and he's having to feel the wrath of his teammate there was someone into the pit lane in the background i think that was john bennett uh, into the pit lane it certainly was for the elite motorsports car not sure 100 percent as to what has happened to the number 27 but either way, he has returned his way to pit lane. So a bit of a shame uh, for one of the two uh, elite motorsports cars. We're looking for a double top 10 uh, with Tom Levin, his teammate, running in sixth position at the moment. Final time then in this race uh, through Eau Rouge, through Radion. Are there going to be any overtaking opportunities on that uh, that Kemmel straight? Is there going to be any opportunity for Kean Shield to try and make something stick? Has he been waiting? Is he deep in that slipstream? By my eye, he's a little bit too far off the rear end. And so for, for Yoel Granfors, he's able to hang on. There's Callum Voison though trying to get past Bryce Aaron this one being for 8th position Bryce Aaron's going to send it in quite deep hooks it up to the apex lovely though through Le Com. and Callum Voison's not able to get through just yet but if he gets a good run through Malmody he'll be down the inside you have to say coming down into Ravage covered off though from Bryce Aaron and Callum Voison just not there in that uh, blue and orange Carlin not able to find his way through for Ravage not able to find his way through potentially into no name so where does the opportunity come the final chicane is the big one but you've got to send it potentially down into the likes of Fania, maybe even into Pool, and I'd say that's a way too far back to give that one a go, but Callum Voisin is hungry, he's inside the top 10, he's made some great moves in this race after a poor qualifying, and Bryce Aaron is super wide there through Puon. he isn't able to uh, to get through though, is Callum Voisin, he was very close, but Bryce Aaron, a costly mistake potentially there, as Max Esterson, Bryce Aaron's countryman, is on the rear end of Brandon Oxley, what a super drive it's been from Brandon Oxley, but uh, I think fourth place could be as good as it gets, it might well drop back to fifth as Max Esterson is charging his way uh, back up. He qualified in third. He's dropped back to fifth and now he is on the comeback charge. Maybe a little bit of a struggle getting those tyres up into the temperature window as we'll have to see if he's going to make that move down into the final chicane. We'll check on that one in a few moments time because this driver is looking for yet another win. How many podiums has he had? How many race wins has he had? Well he had one last year. He's had three this year so far. Let's make that four. Luke Browning across the line in a dominant performance here. And our first time racing abroad in 2022 super drive from Browning Grand Force did manage to hang on Key and Shields though got to say driver of the day potentially with that third spot and there is the move on the line Callum Voisin super stuff to get past Bryce Aaron and up into eighth position but wow what a drive it was now I'm seeing Brandon Oxley is onto the podium I said this about Key and Shields having a super drive I believe he's just been given a drive through penalty I confirm this now it's a five second drive through penalty uh, for track limits for Kean Shield. So he doesn't get a podium. He drops back to seventh, which does promote Brandon Oxley onto his first podium since Donington Park. But there is your race winner, Luke Browning. Once again, super drive ahead of Yoel Granfors. Six seconds clear. 
phenomenal stuff and he'll pull up next to his championship rival Brandon Oxley already been given the note to be uh, told to pull up into third and there is Lee Browning jumping out of the car a fourth win uh, of the year absolutely incredible an eighth podium uh, as well and well if he drives like that a little bit later on this afternoon then uh, yeah he's going to be looking very strong to uh, to start out of this second uh, second half of the season Again, a bit of a reminder that we've got the race. There's two races on today, uh, not just the uh, the one 1950 uh, local time. So 1850 here in the UK will be going racing uh, once again. And Luke Browning will be looking to do the exact same thing once again. He's been handed a few of those caps uh, post-season. Obviously, a big shake of hands between himself and, uh, and Joel Granfors, who, despite seeming to struggle on pace, did seem to at least enjoy that race somewhat. Confirmation, then, uh, of the provisional results uh, heading uh, out of the 13th race. Luke Browning with Granfors and Oxley on the podium. Esterson and Leban with Segrera, Shields, Voys and Aaron and Flack rounding out the top 10. Uh, behind that, we can pick out a few from here, the likes of Matthew Reed. Nick Jilks making up a few positions as well. John Bennett into the pit lane late uh, with retirements from uh, or issues for Mackenzie Cresswell, for Alex Connor, uh, and then a couple of issues for James Headley and Nico Christoulou. Again, a reminder that we'll be back at 10 to 7 a little bit later on. You can follow us here on MSV TV. Uh, until then, though, I'm going to step aside. My name's Leslie Blade, but until next time, we'll say goodbye. Oh, no.